there is nothing better than a nice VFR flight. Knowing how to use your avionics quickly and effectively lets you enjoy that flight even more. Thanks for clicking on the video. If you're here, you probably have a GTN 650, 750, maybe you're looking at them, maybe fly a plane that has it, or whatever the case may be. You want to learn a little bit more, well, that's what I'm here for. I'm Dennis Mahan, flight instructor, CSIP, and I'm here to make you a better pilot. You're going to find a series of GTM-based videos here where we talk about everything from how to use them, VFR, IFR, some of the gotchas within them, best practices. We'll just stick through it all. If there's anything specific you want to see that you're not seeing yet, just leave a comment and be happy to create whatever it is that you guys are looking for. Not only are we just going to look at the GTN and how it works and what the buttons do, but we're also going to look at how it integrates into the autopilot. Most is going to be based around a STEC 55X. That's what most Sears have. That's what I'm familiar with. But we'll also look at a little bit with the DFC 90 and maybe even go into some of the GFC 500 or 700 series operations and how those work. So let's go dig into this video and see if we can learn something today. We're going to do a VFR flight and we're going to plan this from Louisville Bowman, that's my home airport, up to Eagle Creek in Indianapolis, Indiana, just north of the uh, Air National Airport there. This is a really fun VFR flight for a couple reasons. First off, they have a great restaurant up there, so definitely worth the trip if you're in the area. The other fun part about it is we have some restricted M MOA airspace between here and there. Now, often these are inactive and we can go direct, but for today's planning purposes, we're going to say those are all active and we want to avoid all of them. Typically, we would go west, but we're gonna go east today to pick up this uh, Tango Rat, the T213. We're going to look at how we enter that into the GTN 750 today and how we would fly it and how we would use some of the features of that navigator to help us along this flight. So here we are on the home screen of the Garmin GTN 750XI. Now everything we're going to talk about is going to work whether you're talking about a 750 or 750XI, 650, 650XI, and a lot of these even apply to some of their more stripped down navigators they have. Uh, I think it's a 135. I'll put a link in the description for what those are. Also great units and the philosophy is very similar. So I always like to start in flight plan mode. There's other ways to do it, but this gives us the best setup and makes life easier moving forward. So first thing we get is our current airport. And this is always based on your current GPS location. So if you get in here and you don't have anything pulled up, most likely the problem is you clicked on flight plan before the GPS unit has had a chance to figure out its own location. So we're going to go add waypoint. Our first waypoint is IIU for Louisville VOR. Our next will be Milan. However, we're not going to put Milan in there. Instead, what we're going to do is put in Eagle Creek. EYE. Now there's a reason we didn't put Milan in here and we could have, but we're going to make our life a little bit easier and do a little bit less typing, which is always a good thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to load an airway and you always start these from your entry point. Remember, always load an airway from the entry point, not an exit. So we're going to enter from IIU. So we're going to click that load airway. And here we have a list of every airway that intersects this VOR. And there's a handful of them. We want Tango 213. And we're going to exit at Milan. It's really nice in the 750s. It gives you a map of exactly what that looks like. And I'm happy with that. That's what I expect to see. If you're using a 650, there's a button you can push to get this map. And I do like using that button rather than just trusting it. So we're going to load that. Now notice, I didn't have to type in Milan, yet it's in here for us. So we just saved ourselves a few button pushes. At this point, we could be done within the flight plan page, but we're not done quite yet. There's one more feature I really like to use that makes our descent navigation so much easier. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna click on this little line here. Now you're always gonna have this within the XI versions of the 650 and 750, and you may have it within the the older legacy 650 and 750, depending on your software version. So what we're going to do, we're going to click in here, and I want to create a navigational waypoint 
before the airport. I'm going to say this is at three miles. I like to do about three to five and that will make some more sense here in just a minute. So we're taking a point three miles before the airport and I want to be at pattern altitude. Now normally what we can do is just click right here and click this AGL button. Unfortunately there's some issue within this app that's not allowing that button to be pushed. That's perfectly fine. We're going to say 1800 feet is pattern altitude. So we'll click enter there and I'm going to save it. And now we have one more point within our flight plan and this is Eagle Creek minus three. And we're gonna cross that point at 1800 feet. So now we can go back to home, look at our map, zoom out and see how our flight looks. And I'm pretty happy with this. So let's go fly this and look at how we would use the navigation functions and some of the database functions. How do we fly this? So we're going to assume for a minute we have an autopilot and let's just say it's an STEC 55. Uh, similar process to a DFC 90 if that's what you have. We're going to go heading bug 070 heading mode within the autopilot. So next thing we need to do is activate our next leg. So we're going to go home, flight plan, and click on the next point we want to go to, which will be Gamkey. Now we we're not going directly there, but that's the next point that we're going to cross. So we want to activate leg. And here it asks us, do you want to activate the leg connecting IIU to Gamkey? In this case, yes. So we see we have this line connecting Louisville to Gamkey. That's what we want to see. Let's go back to the map. I'm happy with that. So now, how do we use an STEC 55 to navigate this? Well, we go a two finger push on nav and heading at the same time. That will fly our current heading until we intercept our nav course, at which time it will turn on course to fly that nav course. Now within this app, it's a little bit different. I just click track mode, flight plan, and it will hold our current heading to some point and then intercept that flight plan. So here we are flying along. We're still about 70 miles out, uh, 13 south of Milan at the moment. So how else can we use this 750 to make our life easier? Is there anything that we can do here that we may have otherwise done with a, a paper chart back in the day or with an iPad? And the answer is yes, there is. So our first question we need to be asking this far out is what runways are we going to use? Now, ideally we would have planned this ahead of time, but let's say we didn't, or maybe we have to make a diversion where we don't really have an opportunity to plan so we can just use the information in front of us to find what we need. What I want to do is go back into the flight plan and we can just click right here. Now there's a dozen different ways to get here. I'm going to show you my favorite way of getting to this screen. And as we click from the flight plan page, we click on our airport we want to learn about. In this case, it's our destination. We want to learn about Waypoint information. So if I click on Waypoint Info, here's everything in the database that we know about this airport. So our question was, what runway do we want to land on? So we click on Runways and we have the options of Runway 3 and Runway 21. That's great, but now what runway do we land on? And typically we could go find a AWOS, ASOS, or something like that, listen to it, but we're still 70 miles out. We may not be able to pick that up. So one of the great benefits to all this modern technology we have is if you have onboard weather coming in, be that through XM or ADSB in, we can click on weather data and we can get a METAR for the airport. So looking at this, we got winds 340 at four knots. Back to our runways, that seems to favor runway, uh, I believe it'd be runway three. So that's great. We got some extra information here. Now, how can we use that? Well, let's start thinking ahead here. How are we going to enter the pattern for runway three? Well, we know left traffic and we see it right here. It says traffic is left. So we're going to overfly midfield and enter the downwind or we can do a teardrop or however you choose to enter it. That's perfectly fine. Now that kind of changes our plan. So remember originally we said we're going to go 1800 feet or descend to 1800 feet, which is pattern altitude. But now we want to cross over 500 above. So we need to go make a change. So let's go back and we're just going to make a change here to 
2300. And we will save that and that will calculate a new top of descent for us. We can come on the map and we see this top of descent right here. Now how far out are we from that? Well, that's a great question. Let's go back and we'll go to utilities, VNAV. And if you're using an older 650 or 750 that does not have the vertical navigation within the flight plan page, you always have this page too. Now from here, I got some changes I want to make. I don't really like to descend at a three degree uh, flight path angle. That's perfectly fine for final at final approach speeds, but we're talking about descending at, you know, 150, 170 knots or so. We're fast. So I like to be about a 1.7 degree flight path angle in most Cirrus. That number works really well. And that's what the perspective avionics default to as well. So we will stick with that. And now we know we are 15 and a half minutes away from our top of descent. That's some great planning tools to use. Okay, what else can we learn about this airport or what might be useful? Well, how about who do we want to talk to when we get there? Or what frequencies should we use? Let's go to the frequencies tab. And I see we have our ASOS. Now we already know the weather, but it's still a good idea to check the ASOS. You never know what kind of recorded message maybe the airport manager put on there telling you something that might be useful. Or maybe the weather's changing rapidly and it has not had a chance to update on that METAR. So check this out. This is one of my favorite parts about all these Garmin units. If I click 121.75 here, watch what happens up here in my standby comm section. We can automatically send it up there. No chance that you're going to put in the wrong information. So we can come up here, we can listen to it, okay, everything's great. Now we need to figure out who we're going to talk to. So we just scroll down to Unicom 228, we put that in, and that fills to our standby. Now we got something kind of neat going on here. If you look just below, here we see, oh, I'm sorry, EYE ASOS. Yet if we put in 228 for Eagle Creek, but it's given us CEV, so Charlie Echo Victor, that is a shared frequency. And because it's a shared frequency, it, and let's be honest, most frequencies are shared at some point throughout the country. It's telling us what the nearest airport is that shares that same frequency. Uh, 22 is a very popular and almost overused frequency in the area. So we got a lot of airports sharing that. So this is something you'll see a lot. And that doesn't necessarily mean you put in the wrong frequency. It just means that it's shared and that's your nearest airport with that same frequency. So let's work through another problem. Again, this is something we would ideally avoid with some planning ahead of time. But let's say we're flying along and we just now notice, hey, it looks like there's some airspace up here I'm gonna have to deal with. So how are we going to navigate the Class C airspace surrounding the International Airport here in Indianapolis? Well, we got a couple options. We can go below it. Okay, so let's say just for now, that's what we want to do. What altitude do we have to go to? And can we do that without pulling out the charts? And the answer is yes, we can. All we have to do is zoom in and we see right here that that airspace has a top of 4,800 feet and a base of 2,100 feet. So we could go down 2100 or below and be below that shelf. So that's one option. Let's say option number two is we want to talk to someone. Now there's again a handful of ways to find that information. I'm going to show you my preferred method and this is not the only way to do it. Uh, this is not a perfect method but it works reasonably well. So what I like to do is either find the airport nearest me along my route or the airport nearest where I'm going to enter airspace along the route. In this case, I'm going to take this airport right here, uh, HFY, this is Greenwood. We're going to click on there. I'm going to look at my frequencies for it. I'm going to find an approach control frequency, 124.95. So we can put it in here, bring that up. And now I can call that frequency for we can almost certainly assume that's going to be uh, Indy Approach at this point. 
Now, it may not be the correct frequency for us. There are times where doing this will give you the wrong frequency. I just want to be clear about that. However, it's going to give you a frequency that will get you going in the right direction. This is not a substitute for good planning, but it works great in a pinch. So you need someone, you call them, say it's the wrong frequency, they will almost always be able to give you the correct frequency. And if it doesn't work, you can repeat this process for different airports until you find the right frequency. Okay, so we just got our vertical track enunciation. So it says top of descent in one minute. After using an autopilot such as a GFC 700 that has a vertical nav mode, that is your cue to press VNV or the vertical navigation function. That will cue it up and as soon as you reach your top of descent, it will begin a descent to your pre-selected altitude. So if your autopilot does not have a vertical nav function, which most of them don't, you're going to have to find and manually select a rate of descent that works. So you can do this from the VNAV profile page under utilities. There's one last function that we can use. It's really going to help us a lot, especially going into unfamiliar areas where you have airports close together with similar alignments of runways. Uh, you probably know where I'm going with this and you really don't want to land on first off the wrong runway at the correct airport, but you really don't want to land at the wrong airport. It's really embarrassing. Uh, just don't do it. It just causes all kinds of trouble. So we can use a function within this unit that will help align us with the runway. So the way we're going to do that, and again, there's multiple ways to get here. I like to go back to my flight plan page, click on our airport, and we're going to load a procedure. This is how we do instrument approaches, but we can also load a visual approach in here. So we just click approach, and we're, we know we're going to go to runway three, so visual approach, runway three. Now the key here is we want to load the approach. We do not want to activate the approach while we are using the GPS for navigation. So when I loaded an approach, what that did is it gave me an extended center line from the runway I intend to land on with the dashed line extending out in the opposite direction. So we can use this as a tool to cross-reference everything we're seeing out the window. Obviously, we still want to be looking outside. We want to make sure the visual landmarks and everything is lining up. But as a last quick check to look and see, am I lined up on the right runway? When we're on final, we should definitely see that we are over top of this line. Uh, in this case, it will be a white line unless we go and activate that approach, and then it will be a magenta line. So here we are at our bottom of the descent. We should be at our selected altitude. Uh, we've used this navigation functions for departing, for intercepting a leg, flying an airway, loading a, a, a descent profile, flying that descent profile to a bottom of descent or from the top of descent all the way to the bottom of descent. And now we're set up with a with a visual approach loaded into the GPS to really aids in situational awareness. From this point, we're really kind of done with the navigation functions. We're looking out the window. We're doing all the things that we know how to do as pilots.